Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Poe, and today I am doing the My Romance Canon tag. I was tagged to do this by Cousin at Always Doing, I will link her video below, where she adapted the original My Modern Literary Canon that Russell at Ink and Paper Blog did, which I'll also link below, to focus on a romance canon. Uh, and she tagged me in this because she knows I have read a lot of romance in my life, however, I will say that I'm not very well read in romance. I haven't read uh, very broadly and I also haven't read that much modern romance, so I'm still catching up there. Uh, but I thought this was such a fun tag to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it with some slight modifications of my own. Just like what um, Russell and Cousin have done, I've got three categories with five authors each, but because I don't really feel like I'm well read enough in romance to say this is what I think that the literary canon in romance should be. What I'm instead doing is going over what my personal canon has been. So what has formed the basis of my reading in romance. Um, so a lot of the romance that I read was many decades ago. Uh, so I will kind of walk us through these different categories, talk about the authors that I read, and also one of the categories is what I'm really loving right now. So let's get started. So the first category that I want to talk about, I'm calling Murky Past. So these are basically the books that got me into romance, the ones that were super foundational when I was a teenager reading. Um, I read so much romance then, but it's, it's so long ago that I don't have very clear memories. And a lot of these, because they are a little bit older romance, older romance often has quite a few issues, especially with things like consent. So I don't necessarily recommend that other people read these or definitely not start the romance journey there, but they were hugely formational for me as a romance reader, starting with Johanna Lindsay. So Johanna Lindsay's Warrior Woman was the very first romance I ever read. Uh, I was stuck at an airport with a huge delay um, waiting for a flight with my parents and I had nothing to read. I was so bored and so I begged my mom to let me borrow one of her books and she finally caved and did. I was like maybe 12 or 13 at a time and this was the book and since I'd already been a big SFF reader this was a really easy transition because this is a sci-fi romance. So that really worked for me and then I went on and really read everything that Lindsay had published. She mainly did historical fiction not sci-fi fic uh, romance. Romance. And so I read a ton of historical romance, all sorts of different time periods. Um, Lindsay covered a lot of different time periods, Wild West, um, Regency romance, medieval Europe, all kinds of things. And I loved the history as much as I loved the romance. Another author that was hugely influential for me was Christine Feehan. Feehan was one of the biggest kind of paranormal romance writers for quite a while. She had a whole series um, called like the Carpathian series that was basically modern day vampires, um, but had like a lot of really interesting lore related to the vampires and lots of like shape shifting and all sorts of cool stuff. So again, as somebody who came from like an SFF background, that was so easy to get into, really engaging in terms of all of the magic and everything like that. Uh, again, this is kind of one of those older romances, so not necessarily sure that it has aged well, but I read everything that she published for quite a long time. I also read a lot of other historical romance. Lisa Kleepis uh, was one of my go-to authors. I read a lot of her stuff. I stopped reading her around the time that she switched to contemporary romances, but she did a ton of historical romances. Um, I know Kazen talked about Suddenly You, and that is one of my favorites by her. She always did really, really interesting characters, a lot of um, characters that are kind of women who are really independent and interesting and very kind of interesting dynamics with the the guys that they're with so she was huge in terms of I loved reading all of her historical romances um, these I, I think are mainly Regency maybe Victorian uh, but yeah she was huge for me I also really loved Lynn Kurland she wrote a lot of medieval uh, historical romances that had time travel and so she would have modern characters who would time travel back into medieval periods or medieval people who would travel into modern times and she had this whole series called the Di Piaget series and 
I really, really liked that series. In particular, there was one, The More I See You, that I remember I really liked the hero. He was just this kind of grumpy, gruff exterior, but like marshmallow heart uh, type of guy. And this was so cool because again, I love anything a little bit fantastical. And so that idea of time travel really worked for me in this series. And the last author I want to mention for my murky past is Teresa Medeiros. Uh, Teresa Medeiros, I don't know if I read everything that she published, but some of her books were just my absolute favorites, go to again and again rereads. Um, in particular, she had a, a book called Touch of Enchantment, which was also a time travel into like medieval times type of thing that was actually semi-futuristic in the present um, and then was uh, kind of I guess almost like a sci-fi type of travel thing because it was using technology that the character traveled into the past although accidentally um, and fell in love and there was just a lot of humor and really likable characters um, and she also had some other um, kind of historical set romances that were in medieval times, these sorts of things. So uh, really, basically, my foundational reading in romance was based on a lot of historical romance and a lot of kind of speculative SFF romance. And I think that these books, while really foundational for my reading, again, you know, very, very white in terms of who I was reading, not sure about issues like consent or representation or anything, all of these are straight, all of that kind of stuff. So definitely this was foundational for me, but hopefully anybody who's getting into romance now will have a different foundation to build on. Now moving on to my next category, which is old favorites. So these are books that I have read much more recently than the ones in my murky past, um, things that I've read at least in the last decade that I remember really, really loving or that I still reread. So top of this list is Georgette Heyer. Um, if you have been watching my weekly updates recently, you will have seen that I've done a bunch of rereads recently of Georgette Heyer, even though I read the bulk of her novels about a decade ago. Uh, she is somebody who was writing in the 19th 1930s to 1970s and she had so many amazing books that I absolutely love. Uh, one of my favorites is Black Sheep, Regency romance, so much fun, witty banter, really hilarious situations, great characters. So I think that Georgette Heyer is an excellent place to go if you like something like Jane uh, Austen and you want something more along those lines. I think that Georgette Heyer is a great option, especially because there's there's no heat in these romances. They're completely you know, not even closed door. There's just nothing that happens beyond a kiss type of thing, but they are just so much fun. So I, I, I would definitely still highly recommend Georgette Heyer. Another old favorite that I would still recommend and still sometimes read is Mary Ballow. Mary Ballow writes a lot of, especially Regency romance, um, and she has a lot of focus on character emotions and many, many, many of her characters are dealing with um, issues, kind of mental health issues or dealing with disability, these sorts of things. So I really like the way that she explores that in a lot of her novels. Um, one of her favorite series that I, I have is her Bedouin series and in particular, Slightly Scandalous, which has a great heroine, Freya, who is just super, super difficult and strong-willed, and I absolutely love her. Um, so yeah, I, I think that Mary Bella does really interesting things within historical romance by focusing on a lot more of the internal growth of people, and so I, I like her book still. Another historical fiction old favorite for me is Carla Kelly. Carla Kelly wrote a lot of different books that are um, kind of focusing on everyday people uh, in different historical periods. A lot of her stuff is kind of Regency based, but one of my favorite series that she wrote is the Spanish brand series, which starts with the Double Cross, which is about people um, in kind of Mexico in the 1700s, I believe, uh, who run a ranch. And so I just love the setting and love getting different time periods, different places. So I really like a lot of her stuff. A lot of her Regency romance isn't focusing on dukes or anything like that. It's focusing on just much more everyday people, people who are um, just, you know, really working day people. So people who are soldiers or sailors or these sorts of things. And she has very quiet romances. Um, these are pretty much closed door type of romances. They're very low heat, uh, but they're just really quiet and really sweet and deal with some interesting 
kind of difficulties in the character's lives. So uh, I think that she is still somebody who I would read from, even though I don't know that I've picked up any of her books in quite a few years. Then I've got a couple of old favorites that I haven't read for many years, but I really have positive memories of the next two authors. The first is Katie McAllister. Katie McAllister wrote lots of different things, but I really loved her paranormal romance, which is not like the kind of dark and brooding paranormal romance. It is so hilarious. So uh, one of my favorite series of her is the Ashling Gray Guardian series. It is so funny um, and it basically has our world, but there are shapeshifters, there are dragons and demons and monsters, um, very much snarky, witty banter, really hilarious interactions. And I just, I think this series, which starts with You Slay Me, is just so much fun. So I think Katie McAllister is a great person to go to if you want just really fun, contemporary, magical romance. Similarly, Mary Janice Davidson had an excellent series that I was so into called the Undead series, which starts with Undead and Unwed. Um, and it follows the same character, Betsy, uh, through many different books. And basically, Betsy is somebody who ends up becoming kind of like a vampire queen, um, but she never really wanted to. She was just like an office worker, just wanted to focus on you know, getting designer shoes and things like that. She was just very frivolous. And there is such just kind of almost satire of um, the vampire culture in this. It's really funny and just a lot of lighthearted adventure and romance and fun. So this was another series that I have very, very fond memories of. And the last category is my current favorites. So I basically had quite a few years where I wasn't reading any romance. Um, and then I joined booktube and I started hearing about some of the really amazing work that is going on in romance right now. Such cool stuff is being published. Uh, in particular, Kazan at Always Doing, Cynthia at Book Whimsy, Rachel at Kalanadi, and Becca at Read Becca all read really excellent romances. And a lot of those just get on my list and I end up reading them. So many of these are due to those influences, but there is great stuff being published right now. So one of my top top authors right now is Talia Hibbard. Talia Hibbard writes such, such funny and fun um, contemporary romances. Her Brown Sisters trilogy is excellent. My favorite in that is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. She does cinnamon roll heroes and difficult heroines and just so much laughter as well as romance in this series. So really highly recommend that. Another favorite author of mine right now is Jackie Lau. And again, if you've been watching my weekly updates this year, you will have seen her name multiple times because I've been basically reading through all of her backlist this year. I love Jackie Lau's writing. She is such a great writer at doing contemporaries that have a lot of humor, a lot of food, a lot of family, and a lot of dealing with emotional issues. Um, so that's just such a perfect combination for me. Uh, one of my favorite series of hers is the Baldwin Village series, and in particular, the third book in that, Man vs. Durian, which has such an excellent hero and heroine. Um, just really love the dynamic between her characters. Cinnamon Roll Heroes especially work for me, and the hero in Man vs. Durian is so perfect for that. Another favorite is Rebecca Weatherspoon. She's an author who I haven't read that many books by her. I've only read four, but they were so good that I just want to read whatever else she publishes. Um, in particular, she has this Cowboys of California series, which is just contemporary romance set around LA following these um, kind of cowboys who are just ranchers and uh, hotel owners, and they're really cool. Um, the second book in this series, If the Boot Fits, I particularly loved, and she deals with a lot of interesting issues in her books too. Um, and she has uh, characters who are both heroine and hero are black, which is not that common in romance, but it's something that I would love to read more of. So I just hope she publishes a ton more books because I love her writing. Another romance author that I haven't read that much from yet, but I have a favorite series by her is Kat Sebastian, who wrote the Page and Summers series. This is a historical kind of like 1950s um, 
sort of cozy mystery romance series that starts with Hither Page and it is such a lovely story. It's a male male romance and it's got mystery kind of like murder mystery type vibes. It's got really cozy um, atmosphere in this small English village and just such a lovely romance between the, the two male characters. So I for sure want to read more of Cat Sebastian so she made it onto this list of current faves. And lastly, I'm going to include Andy C. Buchanan on this list, who technically is more of an SFF author, but they have this series, the Windflower series, which I have a review for the first few books in that. Um, I'll link that below. Uh, that is this kind of contemporary, cozy, mystery, fantasy romance series. And I think that the romance is exactly what I'm looking for and that it's just this super sweet coming together of people. Um, so this is set in like contemporary New Zealand and it's basically where witches exist in, in the world and then they have these magical mysteries that they have to uncover along with falling in love with somebody. Um, and a lot of these stories are very queer and it's just beautiful. Absolutely love the series. Okay, so that is my personal romance canon, the books that have been foundational to me as a romance reader and kind of where I am now. Um, I'm very much still exploring modern romance. I have so much more to read and I'm often trying different authors and seeing what works for me. I would love to hear from you guys if you have any favorite romance authors, any strong recommendations, or if you've read some of the authors that I have read in the past, like what you think, do you have strong memories of them? Uh, and just kind of hear about your journey in romance. Also, if you're not a big romance, reader but you have a genre that you're a big reader in you should modify this tag and go ahead and make it for your genre so maybe that's fantasy or sci-fi or poetry or um thrillers or whatever it is i think it would be really fun for different people to make their own kind of canon videos where they talk about what has informed their reading or what they think really forms the the backbone of of what other people should be reading because this is just such good work so i would love to hear from you guys, just go ahead and leave me a comment down below.